Waalaikum Asalaam. How are you doing? Thank you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. So, uh, let's start the session. Do you have any question from the previous sections or uh, any other thing that you want to ask? No, ma'am. We can proceed. Thank you. Okay. So, today we will understand the next two uh, components of our first unit. We will evaluate the types of uh, network infrastructures, although you will be very familiar with the network infrastructures. Basically, these are the commonly used networks, uh, network infrastructures, and uh, most probably you will be working on them as well. And uh, secondly, we'll analyze the hardware used within a network infrastructure. Uh, definitely, when we are talking about the uh, network infrastructure that is working uh, uh, physically you can say so uh, we definitely need some hardware that will be supporting us to create our network and uh, to make it work so first we will discuss the types of network infrastructures network infrastructure basically it's a physical equipment you can say a hardware as well as the software applications uh, basically it's a complete support system that help us to accomplish our goals that are related to the business or you can say the technology as well uh, types of network infrastructure include foundational hardware software services and facilities all these things are a part of network infrastructure basically uh, not only the hardware or software are the part of the network we do need to consider the services and facilities of the network that are provided by a different kind of infrastructures so uh, at any level of business, even with the small or newly established businesses, there will be some level of hardware infrastructure, whether that is phone lines, computers, smartphones, or the internet. We do need some hardware uh, for all these equipments as well. These things also often require cabling, routers, switches, and other pieces of equipments which help support them and make sure they are connected internally and externally. So we need to uh, make sure that all the things that are working in uh, relation with others are properly uh, supportive to each other and are connected properly. So uh, definitely if there is a connection lost um, uh, in our network, then our services will definitely be denied or you can say that will be affected by the uh, simple errors. So uh, we will discuss here some network types here. First, we have personal area network. Uh, this network connects electronic devices within a user's immediate area. Basically, uh, people do consider small networks when uh, they are working in an area and there is no need for uh, uh, to connect with the other areas as well. Or you can say that uh, there is no need to expand globally. So uh, we can consider these kind of networks. The size of these networks ranges from a few centimeters to meters. Basically, uh, it's a uh, similar to LAN, but a very short range is considered in this network. One of the most common real world examples of this connection between a Bluetooth earpiece and a smartphone. It is the best example of the personal area network. These networks also connect laptops, tablets, printers, keyboards, and other computerized devices that are uh, basically uh, occurring in the range of the devices so that the connection can be established first and then can work properly as per the requirements. So uh, these connections can either be wired or wireless. Wired connection methods include USB and firewires and the wireless connections include Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So uh, these are the basic things about this network. You can say that this is the most easiest um, network to create on and definitely uh, because of its very short range, we don't, don't need to do long cabling and uh, other stuff that can um, uh, complicate our process of creating the network. Then we are having local area network. A network is a basically a group of two or more uh, connected computers or the devices. And a LAN is a network contained within a small geographic area. Basically, the personal area and the local area networks are similar, but uh, there is a slight difference between their ranges. These are used usually within the same building. You can say like home Wi-Fi networks and small business networks are the common examples of the local area networks. You lands can also be fairly large, although we can um uh, we can consider the long range for these network as well. But whenever we uh, uh as you know that whenever we move to the 
uh, uh, like move above the specific range for lands, then we consider them as metropolitan area network. And then if we are going far beyond, then we consider them as wide area networks. So you can say that as the, as the area ranges are uh, changing or expanding, we are changing the network infrastructures as well. So these are basically as per the needs of the overall network. This is the simplest internet connected LANs require only a router and a way for computing devices to connect to the router, such as ethernet cables or Wi-Fi hotspots. If we are talking about the wired or we do need some cables and if we are talking about the wireless, then Wi-Fi hotspots are needed. LAN without an internet connection need a switch for exchanging data. Definitely these are the basics of this network uh, to create then we are having wide area network. Wide area network is a large computer network that connects group of computers over large distances. Um, let me ask you one thing. Uh, is there anything that you want to ask or it's clear to you? Basically, these are the very basic things we can say. This one very, uh, very clear. Okay. Okay. So let's continue with wide area network. Uh, these are basically large computer networks that connects group of computers over large distances. Definitely when, our, when we are talking about the wide areas, we do consider the wide area networks. These are often used by large businesses to connect their office com office networks. Each office typically has its own local area network. Definitely, when we are talking about an organization, we have uh, already learned in the local area network that uh, these networks are created inside a uh, uh, sorry inside an office or a building. So when we are having an office, and um, you can say when we are having multiple offices and the buildings, then we need to connect them through wide area network. But each um, building or office will be containing its own local area network. So uh, all the local area networks of our buildings will be combining or connecting with each other through wide area network. Each office typically has its own local area network or LAN at these LANs connect via a WAN. So uh, this is, I think, clear. These long connections may be formed in several different ways, including leased lines, VPNs or IP tunnels. Basically, these are the support systems for uh, wide area networks. We definitely need to consider them uh, whenever we are creating a wide area network. Technically, any large network that spread out over a wide geographic area is a WAN. The internet is, uh, itself is also, uh, also considered as a WAN. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so here is a uh, simple example. Uh, then we are here having a metropolitan area network. It is uh, working same as LAN and WAN. You can say that it is the uh, middle form of both uh, LAN and WAN. Um, a MAN is a computer network that connects computer within a metropolitan area, which could be a single large city, multiple cities or towns, or even any um, given large area with multiple buildings. You can say if you are working in an area or you want to consider all the buildings of the area or the region then you can create a metropolitan area network that will be helpful for you to connect within the buildings of the specific area a man is larger than land but smaller than man definitely uh, we know that when we are talking about very small uh, networks that are working for a single building then we uh, consider land when we want to um, connect the LAN with multiple LANs that are widely spread in the overall uh, global uh, globe. So we need to create the WAN. And if the requirement is uh, in the middle of both, then we can consider metropolitan area network. Instead, um, so MAN uh, typically combine the networks of multiple organization instead of being managed by a single organization. We don't need to manage a single uh, man for our organization if we need the man we can we can say that there will be a one uh, organization that will be supporting the uh, network and all of the other people will be connecting and communicating or uh, sharing their resources that they uh, that are basically the requirements of the organizations so mostly metropolitan area networks use fiber optic cables to form connections between the lands uh, definitely when there are multiple offices as we have considered in the van uh, 
all the uh, buildings or you can say that all the offices will be having their own land same here all the buildings or the offices will be having their lands and uh, they will be connecting with each other through the fiber optics cables and uh, it will run on dark fibers formerly unused fiber optic cables then um, that are able to carry traffic and uh, uh, these cables are usually used for the um, uh, uh, for the exchange of traffic uh, and if the traffic ranges are uh, you can say that are very large or expanded then it is very helpful for them these fiber optic cables may be leased from a uh, private sector internet service provider uh, definitely uh, we do need the isps so that they uh, they can provide us with the network facilities and uh, we don't need to uh, rush or hustle for these uh, services that are basically easily provided by the uh, internet service providers. So next we are having campus area network. Campus area network is a computer network that spans a limited geographic area. Uh, it is similar to PAN, personal area network, you can say. Uh, these networks can interconnect multiple local area networks within an educational or corporate campus. Most um, campus area networks connect to the public internet. Uh, when we are talking about the campus area network, you can say the um, corporate sectors or the educational uh, institutes are using this kind of network in which they are creating their own lands and they need a connection between other um, campuses of their uh, institute so they can easily uh, create their network by using the public internet and there are some definitely there are some specific rules to that needs to be followed here uh, these networks are smaller than metropolitan and the wide area networks which stretch over large geographic areas typically the organization that owns the campus also owns and operate all the networking equipments and infrastructures for the campus area network so if you are uh, running an organization that is an educational based or you can say that corporate sector then they need the, definitely they need to have the networking equipments that will be creating the um, uh, network or you can say that their campus area network basically in contrast metropolitan area and wide area network may combine infrastructure operated by several different providers uh, but in case of campus area network, the simple public internet is enough for creating the camp, uh, connection between the uh, campuses. Campus area network is typically managed fully by an internal IT team, giving that team a high degree of control over the network. You can say that the IT team of the, of the organization will be fully uh, supporting the uh, network and create uh, for the creation of network and for the maintenance and for the services or each and everything will be performed by the internal IT team. IT team can apply uh, security policies across the network far more easily uh, if the campus use multiple disconnected networks. Definitely uh, they can use their own policies that will be helpful for them. If the internal IT team is really competent then they can easily manage all the stuff and they can um, definitely work on the uh, on the things that are disconnected from the network and they can easily connect the that nodes with the network for the sake of good security and um, good working or reliable working for instance it IT team may install or manage firewalls to protect the data within the campus area network. Definitely, if their data is confidential, they definitely need to uh, secure their data. Um, sometimes, or you can say that multiple campuses or educational ad, um, organizations are hacked by the hackers and they simply uh, complain that their uh, uh, their question papers are leaked and sometimes the uh, students uh, remarks or the grades are changed by the students or the some of the hackers this is the most commonly uh, heard uh, error of these networks so if the real uh, and the internal IT team is not competent, definitely these things do happen and the uh, firewall is definitely needed uh, to protect the data. Uh, in today's era, there are multiple or you can say that millions of hackers who are just trying to snatch your data either for the sake of interest or you can say for the sake of any other thing that they are doing for. So IT can also manage access to the network by setting login requirements, uh, blocking unsafe devices and setting up other access control safeguards. These are the things that they can do to make their network work proper or smooth and uh, in order to 
uh, ignore the errors that may happen in the network. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so do you have any experience of creating any campus area network or you can say that, do you have any experience creating this network? Uh, ma'am, I have already, uh, I can say like I have uh, <clears throat> deployed from very small type of networks to very large type of networks, which includes all types of networks which you are uh, mentioning here. Okay. Campus area networks, I have done college, college uh, networks, university networks, hospital networks, and uh, military grade uh, networks. So uh, whatever you have mentioned, like man, man, land, and can, I've uh, really done uh, deployments on those. Very well. Even so, uh, firewalls. Okay, so did you face something, some errors like the hackers try to snatch the data and you are the person who is responsible for the security and you are really in the trouble? Then what are the steps that you take? Uh, yes, uh, not only the firewalls, I've uh, worked on the email security also. Yeah. Firewalls, uh, usually what we do is we uh, block the, you know, the malicious IP addresses or malicious uh, URLs. Yes. Uh, malicious IPs which are trying to either, you know, attack on our network. So we make a block list and we add those IP addresses based on the, you know, IP reputations. And uh, for the, you know, the, the emails, uh, we, we, what we used to do is like, investigate the emails where they are coming from either they are spam emails or you know somebody is sending the phishing emails and we would uh, block them so um, i have uh, i can say like um, from the firewall perspective to the email security and then network admission controllers and uh, um, i have uh, how should i you know uh, conclude it like since I'm you have good experience in all these things. So uh, the main concern of my question was basically to get the idea like how you deal with the uncertainties that usually come. Basically, so you are saying that you are responsible for uh, all the other stuff as well. If you have done creating the network, then you need to um, like keep an eye on it and you need to do the uh, things for the security of the network as well. Uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, I started as a network engineer, but gradually made my way up to data center and then security. So then I was working on in some of the operational organizations as well, where, uh, you know, it's like on a daily basis, we are doing this security stuff as well. You know, blocking align or blocking uh, URLs, allowing the URLs, uh, you know, allowing only the uh, authorized or, you know, the authentic users on the network and giving them the limited in network uh, access. It, so and, basically, uh, you know, uh, these are the duties of network uh, security, agent, right? Uh, like the uh, network engineers are not uh, really into all these things that are related to security, right? Yes, ma'am. No, uh, network security is like... Uh, it, it, to be a network security engineer, you, someone must have, uh, you know, the, the person who is working or going to work on it must have network background. Definitely, least, definitely. You know, the, but so, uh, uh, yeah. I was just asking about uh, if I am a uh, simplest, uh, like, network engineer, then I will be only responsible for creating the network. I will not be able to do the, the task for the exactly. sake of security, right? Uh, like, for the long-term exactly. security. Exactly, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Very good. So let's move forward to the other ones. So here we have storage area network. It is also a specialized network. You can say it's a very high speed network that provides network access to storage devices. Uh, these networks are typically composed of host switches, storage elements, storage devices that are interconnected using a variety of technologies, topologies, and protocols. So you can say this is the most advanced form of network or the uh, the really one uh, network that is uh, concerned about the storage elements. So all the things that are needed for the uh, sake of storage are the part of this network. And uh, these networks may span multiple sites 
so uh, our storage area network presents storage devices to our host such that the storage appears to be locally attached this simplified presentation of storage to our host is accomplished through the use of different types of visualization visualization do help us to create our networks in in a way like um, if we are talking about the um, uh, um, uh, azure based or the cloud based web hostings so all these things are uh, providing us their services virtually so uh, these are the things that are really easy to manage for the people who are creating the networks because they don't need to hustle for the uh, for the sake of the data management or data integrity data security data authentication all these things are done by the uh, virtual agents as well so uh, you can say this is the uh, more competent form of the networks that is really helpful for uh, to the network engineers so uh, these networks are often used to sorry i would just uh, add some points storage area sure. network does not you know essentially fall into the networking itself uh, this is called a data center track so san is under the data center engineers who are working i mean eventually the data center connects with the main local area network where the users you know reside but all the virtualization and uh, the storage area network is a part of a data center track and it is only handled by the data center engineers. Definitely, they do need the specialized team. Like uh, simply network engineers would not be able to do the stuff because of their, I think the complexity of the network or you can say that the uh, factors that are involved in this network are really complex. So uh, your point is really good data center track okay so these networks are often used to improve application availability multiple data paths are provided so uh, the availability is ensured here it enhances the application performance uh, offload storage functions segregate or zone network we can enhance the application performance by offloading the storage functions and segregator zone networks basically when everything is uh, segregated and uh, working at their own places then it enhances the performance overall performance of the application where every person or you can say that every team member is doing their own job then everything is managed and working properly increased storage utilization and effectiveness it consolidates the storage resources provide tiered storage and improve data protection and security uh, whenever we will increase the uh, storage utilization uh, like the storage that we are having is increased and the effectiveness of our network is increased it helps us to create the uh, like to consolidate the storage resources we can easily use them and it helps us to have the tiered storage that is really helpful for the sake of managing the data and for the retrieval of the data it is really helpful and it also improves the data protection and security definitely when we are having everything organized well managed definitely it will help us to improve the protection of our data so uh, next we have system area network it is also uh, known as san is a group of devices that are linked by high speed high performance connections so uh, this is also uh, related to the storage area network uh, these connections uses internet protocol addresses basically ip addresses and uh, uh, these are assigned by the uh, tcp ip uh, to each SAN network interface controller. Basically, uh, if we are talking about the uh, system area network, we are dealing with the IP addresses that are assigned by the uh, TCP IP, like the transmission control protocols, basically, to each SAN, net SAN network interface controller that are the NICs. And we will discuss what the role of NIC in the network as well to determine the data routing, like how the data will be routing or proceeding in the network. It also uses a reliable transport, which is built into the SAN to perform data delivery. Uh, SAN include, for example, clusters of clients and server computers. We can have the uh, clusters like uh, uh, you can say the group of clients and uh, multiple groups of multiple clients uh, that are connected to our server computers and they can easily work or communicate uh, because of the very well management and the strong uh, working or the performance connection then we have passive optical LAN. Uh, do you want to add something here or we can proceed i know ma'am uh, well explained already 
Okay, thank you. So, uh, for uh, passive optical LAN, basically, it's a new way to structure a telecommunication network, replacing the traditional structured cabling. Basically, when we talk about the LANs, it is an advancement to the local area network. Uh, which is replacing that traditional structured cabling, which is con which was uh, consisting of multiple levels of switches and routers aggregations that are really um, uh, somehow troublesome for the people to manage. In the traditional model, data was transmitted and dispersed to the desktops through the layer of switches, cables, and routers. Expanding structured cabling over long distances required installation of additional switches and routers to carry the signal. Definitely, whenever you want to expand the network, you need to um, uh, like install uh, new switches and routers to the network so that you can connect them if the uh, slots are already filled. So this means lots of expensive cables, support infrastructure and label time. So uh, in the passive optical uh, LAN, it, it is the most or you can say the uh, cost effective and energy efficient alternative. It uses a different architecture with single mode fiber uh, fiber extended closer to the user and electronic devices that flatten the local area network. So we are having special kind of um, like the hardware here that will be helping us to avoid the uh, extra or the really costly factors of our uh, local area network. So uh, it helps us to eliminating distance constraints and reducing the quantity of cable to the workstations. Definitely, when we are having the uh, advanced architecture, it will be helping us to reduce the uh, reduce all the costs that are actually disturbing our resources or our overall budget of the network. Uh, uh, passive optical net uh, LAN consists of the optical line terminal. Uh, an optical splitter and optical network terminal. Basically, everything is optical and it is working uh, in a proper way, like the line terminal that will be connecting with the, uh, with all the devices and the splitter that will be uh, splitting net, uh, the signals to all the devices that are the needy of the, uh, or you, you can say that the uh, receiver's address and the terminal uh, that are to transmit the signals or the voices. An optical splitter split downstream signals and combine upstream signals to and from the connected devices all on a single strand of single mode fiber. Everything is be, uh, working on a single mode fiber. Although uh, when uh, one uh, when we are working on single fiber like the single mode fibers, then it is really uh, risky at some point when the single fiber will be uh, affected by the uh, by any any like the you can say any bug or error or any other physical assault. Then they definitely then the whole network will be affected by this issue and we may need to replace the whole fiber although there are some uh, some things that uh, are really helpful for us to create the changes if uh, if the whole fire is not damaged we can uh, replace the specific part as well so it is really helpful for creating the network instead of the previous ones where we were using the multiple routers and switches in our networks so next we are having Good. enterprise uh, Yes, you have something? No, no, got it, ma'am. Okay. So in enterprise private network, um, basically uh, these networks serves the original purpose of private networks when data is protected and resources are shared well. So organizations built these networks to interconnect its disparate bodies, meaning the company sites such as office production sites, shop, warehouses, etc. When we are working in an organization that is having a very a large business or you can say that the offices or the workstations are really expanded in um uh, in over the globe you can say so uh, for the sake of sharing the resources with all the networks um for all the uh, like the buildings we do need to create a enterprise private network uh same as for uh, we were talking about the campus area network that was uh, uh, really uh, concerned about the campuses like the institutes or the corporate sectors it is working the enterprise private network is uh, solely working for the large businesses that are having multiple uh, sites or you can say multiple buildings for their business 
so this this network is a progressive example of information technology adding value in the world of business when we are talking about the it then definitely it is expanding uh, daily and uh, they are definitely adding new things into the world of business with a private network businesses have open opportunities to scale up their operations since different business departments which are located in far flung areas often having no connection with other departments would conveniently connect so uh, in this case the businesses can uh, definitely expand their working or you can say that they will definitely grow better if they are having connection within their offices that are located far from each other and they can conveniently communicate their thoughts or their resources are sh shared with each other so that they can have good command on each and everything so it's really an important kind of network for the organizations that are working on the larger projects uh, so in one of the example <clears throat> i would like to an ex uh, add some examples here ma'am sure uh the technologies like for example we have multiple kind of technologies here um mostly it works on the same thing which is called like vpn virtual private networks to connect different you know remote sites or remote offices yes and uh, this is also called site to site uh, lan or local area network which is again uses a vpn technologies or it is also called site to multiple multi sites so for example like connecting head office to the branch offices or you know the remote sites for example a bank with the you know uh, thousands of uh, atms or uh, some some business for example a retail type of business with having uh, you know thousands of uh, shops around the city or country yes Yes, these are the best examples for these kind of um, networks. Uh, yes. I can say that it is really helpful here uh, because when we are talking about the banks, the uh, I really like this example. Basically, uh, when we are talking about the banks, there are hundreds of, I think maybe more than hundreds of um, ATMs for each bank in, um, you can say, uh, in single country. So, uh, they all needs to be tracked at the same time and when they are needed to be tracked then there should be a strong network that will be helping to uh, communicate and to share the resources very well so a private okay. network uh, very good uh, so this Thanks, network sir. yes yes please sorry sometimes uh, you know the banks don't have you know hundreds of uh, atms they have like hundreds of branches and the atms goes above 30000 40000 to 50000 branches uh, definitely ATMs. definitely okay. yeah a private network is enforced with many restrictions in order to create a secure environment definitely when we are needy, needy in need of a secure network we do need to create a lot of restrictions if we are talking about the firewall as you have explained it very well so we are restricting uh, some of the sites to uh, reach our network for the sake of security. So uh, in this way, definitely we need to. So uh, security is one of the fundamental aspects of the enterprise private network, which companies intend to make use of. Such a network is configured in such a manner that any device operating outside the APN uh, cannot seek access to the network so uh, in this way it is really secure because all the authorized um, devices will be getting access to the network all the other uh, devices will not be accessing the network and it is really helpful for the sake of security the network model only allows registered devices to gain access to this type of model definitely uh, it is good for the sake of security. The settings are encoded in routers and access points regarding devices that can be granting access. So when everything is encoded, uh, definitely the authorized person will definitely get access to otherwise all the other people will not be able to get access to and can access the grant. So everything will, will work properly in this way. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, if you would like some technical points, I can add here. But this sure. is going to be a little more very very technically definitely you must add here so, uh, here actually how they register the devices is like uh, uh, first of all the why they want the registered devices versus why they don't want the unregistered devices so registered devices most of the time are you know they are like up to the mark of the business requirement 
for example the business says uh, the, the devices should be secured with the vpn uh, sorry with the antivirus so maybe any any other device uh, the different devices might have the different kind of antiviruses here right but the business approved antivirus and the patch or the you know the download uh, updated uh, signatures of the virus and uh, malwares so <clears throat> So it's like a step by step uh, process. It is called like when, where, why, how, and like these are standards, right? So the devices which are used are called NAC, NAC, Network Admission Controllers. Uh, mm -hmm. Out of this, I can give you example of Cisco Eyes, I S E, Cisco Eyes yes. or Aruba Clear Pass. So this kind of NAC admission or the network admission controller uh, devices or, you know, the servers, they have multiple standards or the standards on how they will, you know, uh, decide whether to give the access to a computer or not. For example, if I bring my laptop and connect to the cable of my uh, uh, office network, so they will see the MAC address. They will see the username and password. So username and password will be checked. Uh, I mean, the switch will take this um, information from my PC, send it to the Cisco eyes or clear pass or any NAC solution. The NAC solution will cross check it with the active directory, which is Microsoft active directory, right? So Microsoft active directory will say whether the user is an, a genuine user. It has a right username and password. And we'll also see whether the device was registered into the company's domain. And the since, the, you know, as a person, I have a username and password, but as a laptop or as any passive device does not have a username or password. So those kind of devices are authenticated based on their MAC addresses. Definitely. It's the MAC addresses. Yeah. So the MAC addresses are like universally uh, significant, right? Right, so, and basically uh, these are the things that are needed to be uh, used in the uh, for the sake of networks. When we are talking about the username or passwords are not the things that are working in the network. So we do need to um, get access through our IPs and our MAC addresses, definitely. Very well explained. And another thing is, yeah, another thing is that, as I said, when, where, why, how is like how I was connected, whether I was connected with the cable or I was connected with the Wi-Fi. When I was connected means, was I connected in the office timing or later on? Why I was connected? So these all parameters do make sense. For example, for me as a as a company employee, I might be the point why, uh, when. When means like when the, the employees are connected to the network. So it could be the working time or it could be the break time or after working hours. So based on all these parameters, the NAC solution, which as I mentioned, like Cisco Eyes or Aruba ClearPass or any other NAC solution, it decides what to do. So I can have the same laptop in the same office, but when I'm connected inside the cafeteria of the network, it will not allow me the access to the servers because this is not the place where I work. This is a place where I might have, you know, chit chat with the employees other friends or maybe eating my lunch right definitely to um uh, you can say that to conclude all these points basically uh, this is uh, we can consider it as a very secure network that is really helpful for the sake of security because of its really tight restrictions that are for uh, each and every person who is going to connect with the network right yes ma'am and uh when after i mean why he's connected is also a part of uh security uh is he connected uh, if, if maybe the user might have still the laptop but he might be terminated right Definitely. from the company so he still might be you know having that laptop and when he's connected and you know with say the, the NAC might based on the uh, configured policies will check whether this employee is even though his password is correct, his machine is domain-based, his uh, MAC address is uh, right, okay? He's in the working time. Uh, he's in the office in the working time in his office, but why is he connected at the at the first place? He has, he has no authority. Now he's no more with the company. He's no more on the, you know, uh, 
operational or professional role so all these points i mean uh, when uh, when we talk about epn and you know the uh, network security all these different factors do include or they they be a part of uh, that security measurements or the parameters perfect very well explained so let's move forward to the next one hybrid vpn basically when we are talking about vpns definitely these are the virtual private networks that are really uh, in use uh, nowadays you can say that every network is connected to the vpn these networks combines multi protocol labeling switches basically um, uh, maybe you will be familiar with this term when we are talking about the label switching they are really helpful for creating the Uh, networks and internet protocol security based vpns these are the kind of uh, networks we can create on typically you would use an ip uh, security vpn at certain sites and m um, mpls vpns at others so you can say that uh, although it is possible to use both at the same site with the ip uh, security vpns as a backup and the other one as a as a front ones to uh, you can say that these are the combinations that we are we can use in the hybrid vpns where you can use the uh, all the types of networks in uh, simultaneously or um, uh, at the single inter- intervals as well so these are cpe based meaning some piece of equipment on the customer premise typically a router or multi purpose security appliance uh, is used to encrypt data and form the vpn tunnel so how we will be creating the vpn tunnel here for the sake of the hybrid vpns we uh, do need some uh, equipments that will be uh, really connected to the router uh, uh, to the network sorry it could be a router or multi purpose security appliance that will be helpful for for the security of our uh, data or you can say that it will help us to encrypt our data from the vpn tunnel so that uh, our data might not be stolen or uh, snatched so uh, these are on the other hand provided by a carrier as well using equipments in the carrier's network so if you are having a proper um, uh, adaptation of the carriers and the uh, like the if you are talking about the customer premise then you need to have some equipment that will really be helpful for creating the network and it will help to uh, ensure the security of your network as well to connect the two you need a gateway that terminates the ip security tunnel on one side and map it to the uh, other one so uh, while maintaining the security vpns are intended to provide so uh, for the sake of security you need to have a gateway that will terminate the um, secure uh, uh, like it will terminate the ip security on the one side to map with the other one when we are working on both at the same time you want to add something here yes ma'am uh, in sure. the previous slide the word cpe means customer and uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, the second point ipsec vpns are cpe based is a customer and the provider edge based okay that means um, uh, from our end we have our router and from the uh, from the isp or the ca- carrier side they have their own router so but what mpls is like it's is kind of a physical network but it is totally isolated from the other internet so it has no connection to the internet it is like a dedicated or dwdm based network which is like physical uh, fiber based uh, network okay okay and they can this is kind of a service provided by uh, the isps for the business to business connectivity or business to uh, branches connectivity but these are like totally separate so yes we can add vpn over on those network that means we have a clear text communication between the two sides using the mpls but by deploying the vpn over mpls that means we are making uh, hashing and uh, encryption on that data as well that means the data which passed from the VP- mpls network it was on the clear text right yes. so basic 
uh, need here is uh, like when we are talking about the hybrid VPN, basically the need is actually to uh, make the mixture of both of them for the sake of security or as you are saying that um, if the if you are really in need of security, basically when we are talking about the networks, we are really concerned about the security because uh, most of the people uh, can uh, easily create the network, but they are not able to uh, do the security. That's the reason I was asking you for the uh, network uh, engineers or for the data security engineers because they both are really not the same although the security engineers do need to have the um, uh, simple network engineering skills but definitely they do need to have some advanced skills same here when we are uh, like um mixing uh, both of them then definitely we need to uh, make some amendments through the uh, like the if we are talking about ip security vpn or mpls based uh, uh, protocols then all of them needs to have clear identification of each other yes ma'am you're right Next, we will analyze, uh, these are the kinds of network that we have explained in this session. So next, we will discuss some of the hardware that are used within a network. So network devices also known as network hardware are the physical devices that allows network on a computer network to communicate and interact with one another for the sake of connection between two or the multiple uh, devices, we do need some hardware components. These are the components that are really helpful for the organizations, for the network creating websites or whatever the people are, um, even if they are working on banks or if they are the retailers, all of them needs to have these, um, some of these uh, hardware network uh, components. So we will discuss them one by one and we will learn their role in the networks. So first we are having router. Routers are the most commonly used uh, hardware component of our networks. Uh, these uh, routers basically connect networks to your infrastructure, enabling systems to communicate. It helps the systems to communicate with each other or to send their data packets. Uh, you need to ensure that the router has spare capacity after the deployment to cope with the projected growth and usage. Uh, why we are talking about the spare capacity here? Uh, this is about uh, when we deploy the network or when we design the network actually. Uh, this this thing is always kept in mind that maybe the net the business which for for which the network is deployed or the router is deployed might grow, Definitely. or maybe uh, grow maybe the services inside the network might grow, and they need you know uh, for example, uh, initially they just wanted the computers and servers to connect. Then later on, if they had budget, they wanted to add voice over IP or maybe they wanted to run some uh, streaming services inside. So if they don't have uh, enough bandwidth, uh, obviously there will be bottlenecks uh, in the network and obviously then the users will complain. Uh, they will have, uh, if, the, if, if the owners have bought a very expensive pieces of, uh, you know, the voice uh, network, then there will be lags in the voice when they are communicating to each other and then Again, you know, uh, this will be a very bad design, a very bad, bad plan. Good. Very good. So in a similar way, uh, switches connect systems within a network. Uh, definitely, we do uh, need to have uh, the spare capacity for both of them. So routers and switches running at capacity tend to induce escalating bottlenecks as you have explained, which result in significantly longer time for client to submit messages to server on different networks. So it is really helpful for the sake of long-term usage because when they are using uh, your created network, they do need to it to work for, uh, for them uh, longer, for the longer periods so that they don't need to uh, like recreate the network for uh, short intervals. Uh, in such cases, the lack of foresight or expenditure to upgrade the router or switch could have a personal productivity impact far greater than the cost. Definitely, the overall, if we are uh, simply ignoring the cost of the routers or switches, we can say that uh, it will really uh, be a bad bad impact for the uh, network creator who don't have any foresights on the uh, needs or the uh, near future because of 
the expanding of network is really the most important factor to be considered when you are creating or designing a network so it is a really important step here uh, when we are creating or connecting the networks with our routers so network hub is uh, basically it's a node that broadcast data to every computer or ethernet based device connected to it basically all the devices that are connected to the hub are uh, are getting their messages or sending their message through the help of the hub it is a less sophisticated than a switch the letter of which can isolate data transmission to specific devices you can uh, transmit the data uh, to the specific de uh, devices where they are uh, working uh, inside the network. Network hubs are best suited for small, simple local area network environments, definitely. Because uh, the connection between the hub is really, uh, uh, you can say, or uh, maybe I'm not uh, sure, but I must say that uh, the connection through the hub is not secure because when you are sending uh, data to uh, one of your peer, you need to send the data packet to the hub and the hub will be transmitting data to the desired address. So yes, uh, definitely it, uh, it it is lacking the security of our data packets and uh, for the sake of small businesses or the local area network, it is good. But for the wide area networks or where we are having really security concerns, it is not a good choice to use. So we totally are having... Okay, so we are having three kinds of hub, active hub, passive hub, and intelligent hub, although uh, these are really working in a simultaneous way, but there are slight differences between them. Uh, active hubs are the hub ones that have their power supply and can clean, boost, or replay, relay the signal along within the network. So uh, if they are having the power supply, they can do all the things on their own. It serves both as a repeater as well as the wiring center. So uh, if the signals are lost, the, uh, it will try to send the signal again whenever the connection is again back. So uh, these are the things that are the good part of active hub. While we are talking about the passive hub, uh, it collects the wiring from nodes and power supply from the active hub so uh, these hubs uh, relay signals onto the network without cleaning and boosting them and can't be used to extend the dis uh, distance between nodes nodes so uh, we can say that the working here is significantly low as compared to the active hub because of not uh, cleaning or boosting them because when we are sending the data packets we really need a boosted reply so for the sake of boosting them, uh, active hubs are really working uh, good. So intelligent hub, it works like an active hub and includes remote management capabilities. They also provide flexible data rates to network devices. It enables an administrator to monitor the traffic passing through the hub and to configure each port in the hub. So uh, although it is working intelligently, but still there is a, a lot of hustle for the monitors because they uh, need to track each and every um, uh, like uh, transmission and the uh, configuration of each port do need really uh, hard care for the, from the monitor side uh, for the sake of good communication and the uh, network uh overall connection so let's move to the gateway uh, do you want to add something to the gateway ma'am no uh i thought you were uh about to talk here no uh for the network hubs it's like uh, almost you know no more use in the networks Definitely. I mean, I cannot now even recall any any network who is using the network hubs. It's like uh, uh, obsolete technology almost because nobody uses the network hubs anymore. Yes, All I can think is, is like if there is any intelligent hub, it might be used in the telecommunication networks just for, you know, routing the, uh, the voice calls only. And, you know, uh, based on uh, like, uh, how should I say, like, counting your calculating the cost per the calls but even now as far as far as i know even the service providers don't use the hubs anymore they are using even the cisco switches they are using the actual switches now to route their uh, traffic definitely switches are really efficient in working so uh... And for the sake of security, network hubs are really not good. So as I have already mentioned it, but still we need to uh, do consider it because um, it's a part of our outline. 
so we need to cover it but still yes. uh, old things do need to be learned because uh, new things are generating from them as well so this is a good thing Next, we are having gateway, a computer that sits between different networks or application. The gateway converts information, data, and other communication from one protocol or format to another. So we can say that it is converting our data and communication from one uh, protocol or from one device to the other. And uh, it is uh, working. Uh, you can say a router may perform some of the functions of a gateway, but uh, an internal gateway can transfer or communication be between an enterprise network and the internet. So when we are talking about the enterprise network, definitely they are the secure networks. So if they are using uh, the gateways between them and internet, then definitely the gateways are really a good option for the sake of communication or uh, you can say that for the conversion of data or communication from one protocol to the other. Then we are having repeaters. Repeaters basically operate at the physical layer. Its job is to regenerate the signal over the same network before the signal becomes too weak or corrupted to extend the length to which the signal can be transmitted over the same network. So uh, the main uh, thing here is that the repeaters are really good for the sake of sending the messages that are uh, really needed to be transmitted uh, inside the protocol, uh, inside the network. And uh, it really works on the uh, signal's uh, strength. It is working properly before it becomes weak. It is really trying, uh, I think it's trying its best to send or transmit that uh, messages to, over the network. An important point to be noted about the repeater is that they do not amplify the signals. When the signal becomes weak, they copy it bit by bit and regenerate it at its start topology connectors connecting if the original strength it's a two port device so you can say that its a main function is really good that is uh, copying the signals if they are not strong enough to be uh, transmitted over the network they can regenerate the message and transfer it to the others for the sake of security it is still not good if the messages or the data packets that are sent to the um, peers are uh, you can say simply looked after by the repeaters that are regenerating them if uh, if the security is uh, sorry if the strength of the signal is lost so you can say that security concern, uh, concerns are still here but the main thing is that your message or your uh, data packet will not be lost. So it's good and bad at the same time. Next, we have bridge. Bridge basically operates at the data link layer where the data packets are linked to the uh, network. A bridge is a repeater with, uh, with add on the functionality of filtering content by reading the MAC addresses of the source and destination. So what it is filtering, basically it is um, adding on the functionality. Whenever it filters the content by reading the MAC address, you can say that it uh, ignores the all the other nodes that are not the part, so, uh, part of the source or destination addresses. Ultimately, it reduces the uh, wastage of time and as well as the data storage will also be kept. It is also used for interconnecting two LANs working on the same protocol. It has a single input and single output port, thus making it a two port device. So uh, it's uh, it, it's working on the simple principle. Uh, there is no complication in it. Only the single input and output is the port and each and every packet is transmitted to the exact MAC addresses from the source to the destination. Transparent bridges and source routing bridges. Transparent bridges are uh, the ones in which the stations are completely unaware of the bridge existence. So whether or not a bridge is added or deleted from the network, reconfiguration of station is unnecessary. So uh, all the uh, like the peers or you can say that the uh, devices that are connected to the network are not known if the uh, if there is any change that is occurring to the bridge or uh, there is no need to reconfigure the overall uh, like the connection 
these bridges make use of two processes bridge forwarding and bridge learning so uh, basically all of the all of these things are managed properly through the uh, transparent bridges uh, if we are talking about source uh, source road uh, routing bridges in these bridges routing operation is performed by the source station and the frame specifies which route to follow so uh, it is properly um, a routing bridge that routes uh, that gives us a route to follow as well the host can discover the frame by sending us spe a special frame called the discovery frame which spreads through the entire network using all possible paths to the destination so it will basically uh, speed up the delivery uh, by sending through the all the possible paths to the destination however if we are sending through all the possible paths it will definitely uh, affect our security but still uh, for the sake of speedy transmission it is really helpful next Good we okay so next we have switch although we have discussed it a little bit with the routers but a, a switch is a multi-port bridge with a buffer and a design that can boost its efficiency a large number of ports imply less traffic and performance when we are having multi-port bridge uh, basically it really helps to uh, connect with the uh, like the all the peers of the network and uh, it helps to boost the efficiency and performance of the overall network a switch is a data link layer device the switch can perform error checking before forwarding data so uh, it make it very efficient as it doesn't forward packets that have error and forward good packets selectively to the per, uh, correct port only in other words the switch divides the collision domain of host but the broadcast domain remains the same so you can say that it will uh, forward the packets uh, as per the uh, like the to the exact locations but it will see if there is any error it will uh, simply uh, deny the packets or you can say that or the those packets will not be transmitted uh, but uh, definitely uh, for the sake of uh, overall data that is needed to be transmitted we do need to look after the packets and their integrity next we have yes no, no, it's okay, man. Uh, next, we have cabling. Basically, although we know that there are multiple kinds of cables that we use in the um, in the network, cabling is perhaps the most important aspect of the network infrastructure. It helps provide channels and connections to transfer information and communication throughout the business as well as external to it so uh, whenever we need to transmit our uh, data packets there should be a medium between the sender and receiver and uh, without cabling a business may struggle to operate efficiently and even function to a necessary standard as it supports expansion and changes within the business so uh, when we are talking about the cabling we do need to consider that if uh, uh, if we are using a cable it definitely support us uh, in case of expansion or uh, any changes that are happening to our business or you can say to our network it uh, needs to be uh, reliable for us for the sake of um, uh, creating or adding other nodes to the cable uh, next we have the uh, telecom cabling uh, it can be integrated with other systems in the business allowing for a business to cover a range of purposes with only one installation so it is really helpful for the networks because it is uh, offering us a lot of services it uh, although it is saving our time and money as well cabling requirements uh, change depending on the needs of each business definitely each business need a different uh, length of cable different uh, strength of cable the um overall frequency that is uh, uh, the part of the cable and uh, used for the transmission of packets needed to be uh, kept in mind and can be scaled up and down depending upon the size of the business and uh, when we are talking about the expansion to the business it do help us while using the cables either te telecom or the simple ones so next we have nic network interface card it's a network adapter basically that is used to connect to the computer connect the computer to the network so it is installed inside the computer to establish a local area network 
or any network you need to have a network interface card it has a unique id that is written on the chip and it has a connector to connect the cable to it the cable act as an interface between the computer and the router or modem uh, so uh, there is a use of cable as well so uh, nic card is a layer 2 device which means that it works on both the physical and data link layer of the network model so uh, these are the really important factor of our network because uh, be, uh, without these uh, network interface card the devices are unable to connect to the network and it really helps to uh, communicate within the network with the help of unique ids Got it, next we have modem modem is a class of electronic devices that convert digital data signals into modulated analog signals suitable for transmission over analog trans uh, telecommunication circuits so when are when we are uh, uh, transmitting our signals uh, and we need to convert them from one mode to the other one then modems are really best a modem also receive modulated signals and demodulates them so covering the digital signals for use by the data equipments a uh, modem does make it possible for established telecommunication media to support a wide variety of data communication you can do um, various kind of uh, data communication with the help of modems such as email between personal computers um fc mile uh, transmission between the fax machine or the downloading of audio video files from a world wide web uh, server to a home computer so these are the really helpful things uh, usually the modems that we are using uh, as in our houses as a wifi modems are already doing the same modulation and demodulation of the signals for the sake of our uh, use and uh, their uh, upscaling and downscaling of the signals is also significant and uh, we need to consider them as well but all the factors like the emailing and the downloading of the files are really uh, needing in need of the modems to uh, perform these tasks uh, so these were the things that uh, we were ha having for the sake of network hardware. So uh, we needed to understand all the network infrastructure types and the components. Do you think that we have achieved it? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so is there anything you want to ask or you are clear with all the parts? Thank you so much, ma'am. Just choose one question and answer to the question. When this the most convenient network I will choose the second one. Okay. In our opinion, which network infrastructure component is widely used? So here I would say the most uh, it, you know, the most used component of the network infrastructure is the modems, uh, sorry, the routers. Okay. Uh, because routers, uh, there are many kind of routers from different vendors, different companies, which can do switching as well at the same time. Uh, so they can perform, they have like multiple ports. So you can connect a computer directly without a need of a switch. They can act as a modem itself. So they can convert the digital to the uh, analogs with you know the signals for the for example connecting the <clears throat> connecting the local area network to the PTCN uh, tele telecommunication network for the voice calls or uh, digital to digital for example to connecting to the ISP for the internet connectivity and some routers also uh, perform the uh, perform as a hotspot net wi-fi hotspot so they can perform this uh, these are called uh, integrated services routers these kind of routers can perform switching routing uh, firewalls there is like an embedded firewall inside is as well and we can modify or tweak the you know uh, <clears throat> the policies for the network uh, network security so very well explained um uh, very well uh, next uh, hopefully we will be having our assignment session Hala, i will see you in the next session till then take care of yourself allah hafiz
اللہ حافظ جزاک اللہ خیر میں